Happy Tuesday, everyone. We have a fun little workshop for you guys. If you guys have birthdays coming up, we got two birthdays coming up at you. Happy birthday, Loreen and Laura Lee. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I hope this makes it just a little extra special. So what we got coming your way today, we got a plank three to five uh, seconds, the side plank for three to five seconds, into that kind of both sides in that side plank, um, three to five reps in total. So we're gonna spend some time transitioning through that plank series and have some fun with that. And I'll show you two different ways you can play with that, uh, depending on how you wanna take it down. From there, we're gonna work on an arch hold, so a 20 to 30 second hold, 10 arch ups, so dynamic, and then a 20 to 30 second arch hold again. And I'm gonna show you a cool little way to take this down too if you do a unilateral work set. You can practice and play with this a little bit, but uh, we'll show you a couple different options in terms of taking that down. So we're gonna roll onto our back and finish off with a tuck hollow with extension uh, for 20 seconds of just dynamic movement for two to three rounds. Really just getting things fired up in the core and getting some heat in there from the inner, inner body to get you to ready for the, the work set. After that, we're gonna start warm up the squats. We're gonna do some sumo squat holds for 15 to 20 seconds. Uh, sumo squat for five reps at a three, one, three. Into a regular squat hold for 15 to 20 seconds. A squat for five at a three, one, three. And then some calf raises. So we're gonna work on waking up those calves, get those ankles and feet ready to go for what's to come. From there, we have a practice round. And the practice round is gonna be variations of our uh, work set. And I'm gonna show you those on the bottom of the workout description with some different options for you. So check that out. Pick and choose, play with what you want to, but definitely use those practice rounds to kind of fire up the thruster, get yourself ready and get that heart rate. Our workout today is one time through. And what we're gonna take down today is 50 thrusters, 150 double unders or an equivalent, 50 jump squats, and then 150 double unders or your double under equivalent. So it's gonna be a nice, I don't wanna say quick, but it's gonna be a nice leg burner for sure. Uh, one time through and we'll see from there where it takes you. Now if you have two dumbbells, you can rock two dumbbells for the thrusters. If you have a single dumbbell, it's going to be very similar to what we did on Saturday with the push press. We're going to alternate every five reps um, until we hit 50 reps in total with those thrusters. Let's get you warmed up, let's get you fired up, and ready to take this on. All right, let's get those feet under those hips. We're going to take the arms big and tall up overhead, palms facing in. We're going to shrug, and then we're going to come back down with the arms. We're going to scratch our back and reach through the elbow back up, big stretch, we're going to shrug, and come back down, scratch your back and reach through the elbow, and then come back up, big stretch, hands going to come out to that T, we're going to turn the hands in, turn them out, turn them in, and out, and in, and out, big reach, big side bend, oh, and side bend, yeah, and then we're going to come down, forward fold, touch those toes, Walk up those shins, take it all the way down, framing the foot, we'll step it back into our lizard, nice and square in those hips, we're going to take the inside hand up, and we're going to rotate forearm to the floor. And we'll come back up, big stretch, and rotate forearm to the floor, and big stretch, and rotate forearm to the floor. Big tall stretch overhead, we'll bring that hand down, we we'll take that outside hand up to the sky, big reach. And we'll come back down, stepping back into our down dog. We're doing a little bit of jumping today, so let's wake up our feet, just walking those heels back and forth, really trying to stay balanced between the big toe and the pinky toe, so not rolling per se to one side or the other. We'll come back into our plank, stepping the other foot up. Inside hand is going to reach way up to the sky, going to rotate forearm to the floor, and then come back up. And then rotate, forearm to the floor, take it back up, and rotate, and back up. Now plant that hand, outside hand's going to reach up, big stretch, plant that hand down again, we'll step back into that down dog, soft hips and knees, we're going to walk those heels, just waking things up, nice and gentle. Back into our plank, tiptoe those feet up. I'm gonna roll ourselves up. 
big, tall stretch overhead. Little side bend. Little side bend. Come on down with those arms. Let's get you guys ready to go. So, if you would like to take down a little bit of scout push-up or a thread the needle, cat cows, please do so. A little bit more lizard lunging. Your call on that one. Pause the video, take that down. We're gonna start heating up the core with those planks, arch holds, and tuck hollows. So, if there's anything you need to do to prep before that, do it now and come join me to get that core warmed up. All right, we're gonna work on starting off our day with some planks and side planks, just to work on some nice positioning for the shoulders and some stability for that shoulder. So we have a little, little, little complex. We're gonna go from planks to side planks, and there's a couple of ways you can do this. First things first though, let's talk about the movements. We get ourselves into our plank, gripping the floor with those hands. We're gonna push the shoulders up a little bit to the sky and pull the ribs in. We're gonna hold this nice plank position as is nice and strong. I'm gonna hold for three to five, and then we're gonna transition to our side plank. And we can do this a couple ways. We can shift our weight into that single arm, pushing through that arm the entire time, taking that other arm up, keeping it across the chest, to the hip, wherever you need it to be. Holding for three to five, always pushing through that balancing arm. Then coming back down, holding for a beat, and then turning to the other side, pressing into that side plank position, always pressing through this balancing arm so it's nice and active. And then we come back through, hold for three to five seconds, and then continue on to the next rep. Another way we can do that is holding for three to five, into one side, holding for three to five, over to the other side, and we can work on that as being uh, two reps as we get going through. The only kicker would be we want to keep you balanced, um, so you want to do two per side at least at the minimum. So we want to make sure you're doing an even number at that. You're going to spend a little bit more time in that full mid plank with the arms down, all right, opposed to the side planks, but it's going to give you a lot of time under tension and a lot of time to warm up that core. Now, if the side plank is an issue in terms of balancing or staying stable through the shoulder, what you can do, you can pull everything into that plank, you can drop the knee, lower to the side, squeezing that hip and open in that supported side plank, or we can keep the feet a little apart and we can keep the feet slightly staggered, one in front of the other, which will give us a little bit more stability and balance enabling us to really press through that arm. So we want to keep this shoulder active, not sunk in here and get in the shoulder. Now, after that we have our arch holds. So we're going to lay on our stomach. So we have an arch hold to arch up. So the arch hold is just that isometric hold, toes together, arms out to the front, I squeeze my toes, I press my armpits down, and I'm going to inhale, reaching long with the arms, reaching long with the toes, and maintaining this long body position. I can do it with two hands, two feet, or I can reach with a single arm, single leg, still focusing on straightening out that body and reaching for length. Now, when it comes to the arch ups, the dynamic phase, what we're going to do is again work on inhale, reach, exhale down. Inhale, reach, exhale down. If I want to do that exit or the uh, unilateral, I'll inhale, reach, and down. Using the opposite side as a stabilizer as I work through that movement set. So a couple ways you can do this. If you're going to hold statically on the unilateral, you can hold right hand, left foot for that whole 20 to 30 seconds. Move into your dynamic. Then you can hold the other side for the other 20 to 30 second hold and balance it out that way. Or you can just half the 20 to 30 seconds on one side, do it on the other side, do your dynamic, half on the other side, and split those unilateral work sets up per, per side per hold. It's up to you on how you want to take that down. I just want you to get yourself a nice opportunity to work on that good active um, arch hold position. After we're done now, we're gonna move into our tuck hollow. This is always a good one. It's always a tough one, isn't it? So we're gonna pull those ribs in. And we're gonna pull those knees to the shoulders, keeping that engagement in that tuck position. 
Once we've established this tuck position, we're going to maintain this proximity of shoulder to knee as best we can as we extend those legs super straight and then we pull those heels back to the glutes. Our goal is to work that compression the entire time. Now, depending on how tight your hamstrings are, as I extend, it might pull your leg away from your shoulder. So you wanna try and keep that compression the entire time. So listen to your body, challenge yourself, but I want you to take the time that you can really feel that extension through the hamstring and really work that compression. So don't just pump your legs out with this one. Extend slow, work the compression, come back in. And really take the time to kind of experiment with that and have fun with that. It burns, it's a good time, and it's gonna really fire some stuff up. Quick little recap, we have our plank, three to five seconds to side plank, three to five seconds, three to five reps in total. Arch hold statically of 20 to 30 seconds. Arch up dynamically for 10 reps. Then we have our arch hold of 20 to 30 seconds. And then we have our tuck hollow with extension for 20 seconds. Two to three rounds there, working on that nice movement set. It's gonna get the core fired up, really help get some heat going. And now we're gonna get those legs going as we start warming up that squat. All right, we're gonna combine some squat holds and some dynamic squats as well in this warm up. So we're gonna start off with our sumo squat hold. So our sumo squat hold takes place in this nice wider stance. The only difference between our sumo squat and our regular air squat is we're gonna show a little extra attention to the knees out. Just with that wider stance, it's much easier for those knees to come collapsing in. We want to show those legs a little bit more attention on the press out. So I'm going to turn profile so you guys can see my hips in my back position. My feet are nice and flat. I'm going to take my hips down to my heels, actively pressing my knees out the entire time, keeping those feet flat, that body tall. I'm going to hold this engagement and hold this position the entire time. Once I'm done my hold, I'm going to stand right out of it and go right into five dynamic temporal sumo squats. So the first one is gonna burn a little bit more, but I want you to try and keep it nice and smooth and steady. We're working that sumo squat at a 3-1-3 tempo, so it's gonna be a slow down, little pause, slow stand, and it's gonna be a nice way to kind of move that, that body around after that nice uh, static hold. After we're done the sumo position, we're gonna to come to our regular squat stance. So our stance comes from here, somewhere between the shoulder and the hip width stance to get our regular squat stance. Now, same concept, we're gonna draw those hips towards the heels, keeping our chest up high, weight through our midfoot, and we're gonna keep focused on those key points in our squat hold. Once we're done that squat hold, we're gonna stand tall, and we're gonna move right into that tempo dynamic squat, working that regular squat position because we're gonna use this quite a bit in our work set today with our thrusters and our jump squats. So really take the time to narrow in that, that squat position and those good mechanics, because they're gonna come in handy today. Last but not least, we're gonna work on those feet and those ankles. We're gonna work on some calf raises. So we just have 30 seconds again just to work on a nice smooth calf raise. You can load this, this movement with the dumbbell to the side in a suitcase, you can even go front rack if you'd like, or just holding to the front. But regardless of whether or not you load it or not, the movement is the same. Our feet are gonna be under our hips, our toes point straight ahead, we squeeze our glutes, we set our ribs. If you need a little assistance tool, you can do this in front of a counter or the back of a chair, and just loosely have your fingers touching or hovering. We're gonna squeeze, we're gonna push onto those toes, balancing between the big toe and pinky toe, Stay nice and steady. Doesn't have to be fast, doesn't have to be slow, but we want to try and stay as balanced as we can between the big toe and the pinky toe so we're not rolling to the outside. We're staying nice and square. So nice and square, pushing through those feet. It's gonna be a nice chance to heat the calves up, strengthen the feet and the ankles a little bit. And the other side of things too, if you want to do this barefoot, it'll also help to add in and build in some foot balance and strengthening. As a quick recap, we have a sumo squat hold, 15 to 20 seconds, sumo squat for five at a 313, squat hold for 15 to 20 seconds, regular air squat for five at a 313, and then low.
loaded her on little calf raises for 30 seconds, one to two rounds to get that body fired up, and then we're gonna move into our practice round to get you closer to that work set. Pause the video, take down that lower body work, come join me, we're gonna start throwing around some dumbbells. All right, so the movements in our workout today consist of our dumbbell thruster, our jump squat, and some sort of dub or double under variation or skipping variation. So I'm gonna have some options at the bottom of the workout description for you guys for equivalents to the double under. A couple will be some non-impact variations, some will be the impact variation, but we're gonna go through some different options. So the first thing we have is our dumbbell thruster. We've done quite a few squats, but now we're gonna get our dumbbell up and we're gonna clean it to the front rack. So the dumbbell rests on the back or the back end of the dumbbell rests on the shoulder. My toes turn slightly out in my regular squat kick. Now I have to execute a good front squat. So I set the position, same mechanics as my air squat, except I hold on to the dumbbell and I don't let it move and I want to make sure it stays nice and stable and my body stays upright. Now at the top of that squat, I'm going to try it out of the bottom to get momentum on the dumbbell. So I can give it a good squat, big push overhead, one big push overhead and I come back down. So the dumbbell is already starting to move as I'm standing out of the bottom of the squat. And that's going to help lift that dumbbell once my legs and hips open. And I'm going to continue the momentum with the arm. So it's not a ton of stress on the arm in terms of the press if our timing is correct. So I want you to really feel that drive with the legs and the hips and a continuation of that overhead position and drive with the arm. So think legs, legs and hips do the press, the arms finish the press, locking it out. Now with that, if you're gonna use a single dumbbell, we're gonna be alternating five, 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 five in the workout. If we're doing doubles, we're gonna just rock doubles and work on that really key squat. So I cannot stress it enough, our front squat is a huge foundational movement to the thruster. So focus on that good front squat. It'll 90% guarantee a good press overhead. Now from there we have our double under. So we have some skipping. So if you can skip at home, we have singles, we have doubles. We also have what's called the ankle pop. The ankle pop is a beautiful exercise that we can use to warm up our ankles and get our jumping rebound kind of reflex going. So a couple things, we just worked the calf raise. So I'm going to show you what we've been playing around with quite a bit, which is a non-jumping ankle pop. And I get set up, glutes tight, core tight, elbows out slightly, or sorry, elbows in, hands out slightly. And I'm just going to kind of pump my feet. I'm going to work on staying balanced, centered, so I'm not moving all over the place. I feel pretty good balanced. And I'm not touching my feet down to the floor, and I'm not controlling that super much on the way down. I'm allowing my rebound and that ankle reflex to kind of take over and bring me back up. So I'm pretty free in that movement and it's going to help allow that elasticity of the ankle to kind of pop myself up a little bit in the foot. So that's a nice place to start, just to fire up those feet and calves and ankles to get yourself ready. If you're like, well, I do like a little impact in that ankle pop and I like to practice that, you can work the full ankle pop or we actually be to the ground. We work on that full jump, where we work on that ankle pop, and we just get that nice little pop, and we're allowing the knees and the ankles to be relaxed to, again, do what they do naturally, absorb and rebound impact. Now, another piece is we can work the power jump, which is more similar to a doubler. And if you're working on the timing, this is a good drill to play with. We have our hands to the ready, we do a couple jumps, one, two, power. We're not changing the ankle pop at all, except we are just getting used to the timing. So I get a little higher jump just to simulate that little power jump, and I'm gonna flick my wrist a little bit at the same time my feet go. So it's a nice way to practice the double under without having a rope, because it's all about timing. So it's hands and feet, same time. So as soon as that foot jumps, the hands go. So it's a nice timing drill you can play with without a rope. Now, if you're like, oh, I don't really have a rope, but I would like to practice jumping over something, we have our dumbbell, and we can work on our lateral jump, 
skip, or step. And with the step, you can go high step, you can go low step, right? The high step is a nice way to open up the hips in that circular motion. The low step will just get those feet moving and that heart rate going up a little bit. So a couple different options there to play with. I will have more at the bottom of the workout description for you, but those are a couple of really nice options to play with in your practice rounds as you start building to what you're going to be doing in your workout. Our last movement, again, the foundational movement is the air squat. So we have our jump squat. So I'm going to turn profile again so you guys can see. I'm going to build it up from the air squat. So if you'd like to do this variation instead of the jump squat, you're more than welcome to. Normal squat stance, nice and set. I pull my hip to the heel, knees track the toes, and I stand. Normal air squat, just like we practice in our warm up. Now we have a non-jumping jump squat, which is going to be working on that acceleration, but also that pulling under into that squat again. So we work the deceleration. I pull down, I drive, squat. So I'm only driving, my heels come off, and I pull back into the squat. Now the full jump squat, same thing except I actually leave the ground. I squat, I drive, and I absorb back into the floor, working on that good solid squat. So again, that air squat, super important foundational movement in there to really, really prime up everything we're doing in the workout. With a good air squat, comes many, many advantages in the world of athletics. So this is a great day to practice those key foundational movements. As a quick recap again for this workout, what we have is 50 dumbbell thrusters. Five per side with a single dumbbell until you've done 50 or 50 with two dumbbells. Double under equivalent of 150 reps. Jump squat for 50 or one of those variations. And then again, double under for 150 or that equivalent for that same amount of reps. One time through, let's have some fun. Let's celebrate some birthdays and have a great time and bring in Tuesday and have a great day. As always, everyone, work for quality, have a ton of fun. Laureen, Laura Lee, have a fun time today with this work set. I hope you guys enjoy and we'll see you tomorrow for some more fun programming. Bye, you guys.